Senator Patterson. Thank you very much, Chair, and uh, thank you, Governor, for your time this morning. Uh, my first questions uh, follow up on some questions the Chair was just asking then about monetary policy support. And uh, I think you said, worse the effect of the Reserve Bank will be keeping uh, monetary support in place for a long period of time. Uh, does that formally constitute uh, forward guidance about interest rates for the next few years? Uh, well, I think so. Um, we've been very clear we're not going to be raising interest rates until full employment is in and we're sustainably within the 2 to 3 per cent target range. So that's the guidance we're giving and uh, I think it's also reasonable to expect that that will not be for some years. The way the world at the moment, I, I, I have trouble seeing inflation sustainably within two to three percent uh, for quite some time, and I think it's going to be a long, drawn-out process towards we get back to full employment, which means we're going to keep interest rates where they are, perhaps for years. So, in light okay. of that, we, the committee will be hearing from APRA later today, and I, I plan to ask them about the interest rate buffer that they have in place for residential mortgages. It's currently two point five percent. Um, now, in order for uh, that to be achieved, there would have to be 10 interest rate increases at the standard 0.25% uh, uh, rate. How realistic do you think it is that there would be 10 interest rate rises between in, in the next few years? Uh, I think that's very, very unlikely. Something extraordinary would have to happen for interest rates to go up 10 times in the next couple of years. Yes, I would have thought uh, you so. Might, you probably know this, that APRA did last year make some adjustment to the way the buffer was calculated. It used to be kind of a, a fixed level and that, then it became a margin over the cash rate, which I think was sensible. And it's kind of a, it's a reasonable um, discussion to have about whether that buffer could be narrowed given the extraordinary circumstances we're in at the moment. Great, thank you. I, I will ask them about that. Um, uh, just on, on fiscal policy, um, you, you, I think you hinting or indicating earlier that, that modification or extension of the, of the job of the job paper pro program might be necessary. Is that what you were alluding to? I mean, it may be necessary, but uh, the key observation is that the world's very uncertain. And I think it's too early to say what it's going to be, what the economy is going to be like in four months time. But um, if we have not come out of the, the current trough in economic activity, there will be a and there should be a debate about how the job keeper program um, transitions into something else, or whether it's extended for specific industries or uh, somehow tapered. I think mean, it's very important we don't withdraw the fiscal stimulus too early. Mm. So, so given that uncertainty, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. Uh, given that uncertainty, it, it's probably too early to make decisions about something that, that's not expiring for four or five months. I, I would think so. The, the program uh, did have a three-month review uh, built into it that was very sensible and that review should be used and we're not at the three-month period and it, it may be that given the uncertainty that review gets pushed out a bit and that might be sensible. Uh, but my main concern is that we don't withdraw the fiscal stimulus too early. Thank you. Uh, moving now to the policy reform agenda, in your speech on the 21st of April you flagged a couple of priority areas for reform for Australia to help get us out of this crisis. And you use very similar language in your opening statement just then about those priority areas for reform, indicating that um, making sure Australia is a great place for businesses to expand, invest, innovate and hire people is the best way of extending the recovery. Um, yeah. Can we just drill down a little bit into the detail of each of those proposals? What would be necessary to make Australia a better place for businesses to invest, expand and hire people? Uh, well, this is not my core area of expertise, but I think the, the Prime Minister touched on many of these areas in his speech to the National Press Club uh, earlier this week. You know, the tax system, he didn't talk very much about that, but uh, most of the analysis that's been done on our tax system uh, through the various reports comes to the conclusion that it's not optimally designed for, for growth, the way we tax consumption income and land is not optimal from a growth perspective. Uh, another area is our approach to regulation and the incentives for entrepreneurship and innovation that we established through both our culture and through the tax system. 
the Prime Minister talked about the industrial relations system and the skills and education and human capital systems. And I would add to that list uh, the way we select infrastructure projects, the amount of infrastructure we do and the pricing of those, um, that infrastructure. In each of those areas, there have been numerous reports over the past decade. So I think the, the best advice I can give is for people to read those reports and take the best ideas. And uh, there's been no shortage of ideas here. What there has been a shortage of is uh, an ability of the political and social system to build a consensus about implementing some of those ideas. So I think that's been the challenge, not, not uh, deciding what the ideas are, but building the uh, social and political consensus and building the coalitions to implement some of those ideas which will help. Uh, my fear has been that if we don't tackle some of these issues, then we'll just kind of meander along, the economy will be okay, but we will not return to the type of growth in living standards that we saw over the past uh, 20 years. I think we can return to stronger growth in our living standards, but we do need to address these areas and we need to find a way to build the coalitions to get these things done. And so the, I think the Prime Minister's address the National Press Club uh, earlier in the week was a, was a helpful starting point there. Okay, just, just to go through uh, each of those areas in, in a little bit more detail, you said that, that the way that we, the tax mix that we currently have is not optimal. Uh, do you have any views about the changes that would be required to make it more optimal? Uh, I, I have views, but I don't really think it's kind of appropriate for me to share those. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's not my job is uh, financial policy, keeping interest rates low and running the payment system. So I don't want to offer public commentary on the design of our tax system. All I do is encourage you to read the many very worthy reports that have been written on this topic. Fair enough. Okay. Um, rather, if I during that debate. Yes. Well, that's fair enough. So rather than asking you to talk about um, reforms specifically that are required. How about we, you identified, for example, uh, regulation as a potential barrier to entrepreneurship. Uh, could, you, could you explain why you think that our current approach to regulation is problematic or, or an obstacle to entrepreneurship? Uh, well, this is a, a very high um, level comment, but I think over the past uh, 20 years, whenever a problem has emerged in society, we've generally responded to that with additional regulation because the sense is we don't want mistakes, so we regulate to stop mistakes happening, and which is perfectly sensible. But that process is also limiting the ability to seize the upside. We stop the downside through regulation, but the, the culture that's coming um, together with that regulation is limiting the upside and the dynamism in the economy. I think this is one thing we've seen progressively over time is the economy is becoming less dynamic and mm. that's both culture and regulation. And I fear that one result of the virus, one of the shadows cast by the virus is going to become even less dynamic. Mm. Can be more conservatism, more caution, a lot of structural change. So uh, I can see real benefits in reinvigorating the sense of dynamism in the economy and regulation is one way to do that. But it's broader than that. It's kind of the culture and our approach to kind of, you know, do we, when we see things go wrong, do we regulate them and or do we kind of have a different approach? And I, I fear that over time we've um, erred too far in the direction of regulation. Perfectly sensible to kind of stop bad problems happening, but that also limits the other side, the upside as well. So. So I said it's a very, very high level, but it's something that we should think about and somehow uh, reinvigorating the dynamism in our economy is going to be a critical issue over the next few years because I think we are less dynamic. And, and just, um, I know this might seem self-evident to you, but but why is a dynamism important in an economy? What does that, what what's attractive about that for an economy? Well, we want we want firms who are who are prepared to grow, to invest in high high people. That's what I'm really talking about, and to develop new products and new ways of doing things, and to grow the economy. Because ultimately, the um, economic growth delivers jobs and incomes to people, which is what is important. So, if we if we want to have rising incomes and our children to have better standards of living than we do, then we need to grow the economy. We need to become better at doing things, finding new ways of um, be more productive. So it's, it's really about, you know, I think in the end, delivering 
better standard of living for our kids and we need to grow to do that. We're in a fast paced world. Um, if we do that, we'll be okay, but our kids will not have materially better standards of living than, than I enjoy. And that, that's my fundamental concern. Yeah. We have we have the um, capability as a nation to do this. As I've spoken on other occasions, our fundamentals are fantastic and I'm kind of optimistic about our ability to kind of leverage those fundamentals, but I do think we have to challenge the way we've been doing things. And just finally, um, one more issue on industrial relations, again, not asking you about specific reforms that should be proposed, um, but what about our current system do you think is, is holding back businesses from, say, hiring more people? Uh, I'm, I'm not close enough to the details, but um, over the last year, I've had um, very productive discussions with the business community and with the ACTU, and I've seen a lot of commonality. They both complain about similar things, and uh, so I was um, very pleased to see um, the initiative of the Prime Minister um, this week. So, okay. But I don't, I don't, I'm kind of not really appropriate for me to get into the specifics um, at this point. But okay. there are a lot of Thank you very much, Governor. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you.